Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Good morning. This morning is Celebration Sunday, and the text I've chosen for Celebration Sunday is taken from a little book in the New Testament called Colossians. It's one of the earliest of all the books written in the New Testament. It's one of the most heartfelt books, one of the most spirit-filled books in the entire of the, the New Testament as well. I'm going to be reading from Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And this is what it says. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through Him to God the Father. Just quickly. There are three things there. Whatever you do in word or deed, that means whatever you say and whatever you do. Well, that pretty much includes everything. But it says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. That it's in giving praise. It's in his authority. It's in his name. It's in his honor that he's present in everything that we do and that we say. And the third thing that it says, that giving thanks through him to God the Father. Our daily lives are a conversation with Jesus, giving thanks, giving honor, giving praise to him. So this Sunday, it's a, what we're calling Celebration Sunday. It's an opportunity to not just hear from me, but to hear from folks in the church about what this church is, is meant to the evidence of God in their lives throughout the church and so, some of the people in the church. And started trying to think, of, okay, well, how do I want to organize this? And I don't want folks just to, to start talking about all kinds of different things. Our mission here in this church is to help people live a Christ-centered life. And we do that through worship, through outreach, and community. And those are the three areas that I've asked folks to, to come and, and talk a little bit about evidence of God in their life through worship through outreach and community. Worship, it's right at the heart of who we are and what we do. When Jesus was asked, what's the most important commandment? He said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Well, that's worship. Yes, we calibrate on Sunday. We calibrate our, our, our attention on ways that maybe during this past week we, we haven't been focused on Jesus, giving thanks through Him, that we haven't been serving Him, loving Him with heart, soul, and mind. And so on Sunday, we, we come together in worship to give praise, to give honor, to give thanks. But that's not all that we do. Jesus said there's a second command like it. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, that's, that's outreach, that in, in loving our neighbor, the second commandment that Jesus said in, in Matthew twenty two thirty nine, 39, that it's, um, it's what we do. It's not a ministry of the church. It's what we do as, as Christ followers. Is that we let folks know they matter to God and that they matter to us. Well, that's outreach. 
And the third thing, worship, outreach, and then community. Well, that's um, right at the heart of who we are as human beings. It was God who said, it's not good for the man to be alone. Well, he was talking about women too. It's not good for any of us to be alone. We were made to be with each other. We were made to be in relationship with God and with one another. And so we, we come together. Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, I'm in their midst. That not only do we come together with just other people, that Jesus is right there in the middle of it. So we, we build community. We build community around that relationship with God, around that relationship with other people. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So that's what we're about this morning. The first person that I'd like to invite to come speak is Greg Tuttle. And I want him to talk a little bit about evidence of God in his life through his family as they've been a a part of the church here at Roswell United Methodist. Greg, come on up. There you go. I want to make sure that folks hear what you have to say. How long have you been a part of the church here at Roswell? So for about five years now. Okay. And what service do you come to? Typically the 9 o'clock service. Okay. But we occasionally do that 8.30 on uh, Communion Sundays yeah. as well. A lot of folks like that yep. service too. Well, tell me a little bit about worship and what it's meant to you, your family. Yeah, worship, when I think about it, um, really three things come to mind. The first is dedication. Yeah. Right? It's a time dedicated to God. The second is community, right? It's a chance for us to come and be part of a community. And then the third is nourishment, right? Yeah. Nourishing our soul, our heart, and our mind through interacting. Yeah. Well, I've noticed every Sunday your whole family's here. It's not just you alone. And, uh, and I've noticed your kids very much taking a part in worship. Tell me a little bit about their ages and, and some of what that's meant to them. Because I've seen them growing up through the, the years that you've been here. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you've probably heard them as well. Yes. Inadvertently. A um, <laughs> you know, little bit less now than when they were younger. Yeah. But it's... In my mind, it's the most important thing that we can do as parents yeah. is make sure those three things I just mentioned, our children are getting those every week. So my oldest, Harper, yeah. is 11. My middle one, Jackson, is nine. And then my youngest, Finley, is eight. Okay. Well, and I've seen them praying at the altar rail and um, really taking part in the singing. Whatever's being sung, they're, yeah. they're very much part of it. Uh, and worship, has it made a difference in your family? Oh, it absolutely has. Uh, there's so much going on in the world. There's so much kind of noise out there, whether yeah. it's school or work, things to do around the house, social media, news, all of these things are happening. And obviously you try to sit down as a family in the evenings for dinner, but even that with sports and activities don't always happen. So what Sundays give us is a chance to really get together as a family yeah. right, and have that dedicated yeah. time yeah. for us to connect with the Lord yeah. as a family. And knowing who we belong to, whose we are. That's right at the heart of worship. Absolutely. Anything else you'd like to add? No, just, um, you know, one of my favorite times of the week is showing up on Sunday mornings. So it's not something that we think about as a family, you know, as something that we have to do. It's something that we get to do. And as I said, it's that time to be together as a family, um, to be purposeful in our relationship with the Lord, in our relationship with other fellow Christians, and then the ability to praise through the wonderful music here yeah. and then through the learning as well. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for being here. I appreciate it very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Next, I'd like to invite Kathy Newman to come up, talk a little bit about outreach. She's been plugged into to reaching out to other folks, letting them know that they matter to God and that they, they matter to us. Kathy, if you'll come on up here. Um, how are you this morning? I'm great. Good. How long have you been a part of the church here? My husband and I joined the church with our small children in 1988. Well, they're not small anymore then, are they? They are not small anymore. <laughs> oh, I, you've been a, a really big part of the church. Um, I know 30 years ago when I was associate pastor here, I remember you from then. And you've, you've been plugged in for a long time, but especially you've been plugged in to outreach. Tell me a little bit about evidence of God in your life through outreach here at Roswell. I would love to. Um, two of my 
most rewarding and passionate loves in this church are the programs of Family Promise and the tutoring program Mighty Mentes, which means Mighty Minds in Spanish, at Vickery Mill Elementary School. Yeah. School. Tell me a little bit about what Family Promise is. Family Promise is an organization that provides uh, help for families with children who have become homeless on yeah. an emergency basis. We're part of the North Fulton DeKalb uh, affiliate, and we are joined with 15 other congregations who, for a week at a time, provide uh, shelter and food and safety for these families. Where is that shelter? The shelter here at RUMC is at the Dodd. So just right across the street? Right across the street. Well, good. Well, what do we do as far as shelter, what did you say, shelter, food, and? Safety. Safety. Mm -hmm. Okay. We welcome our families into the Dodd on a Sunday afternoon, and we turn the uh, classrooms on the first floor into bedrooms and living spaces. We provide meals every single night for the families. And one of the most important parts is we provide hospitality. And so we have um, volunteers who prepare the meal and who visit with the families and who just share life and provide hope to our families. We also have volunteers who spend the night so that they say, we're here. If you need anything, we're here. You know, it is that small touch voice, not mm -hmm. just pushing across the table, here, this is for you. But the listening and the talking and the sharing, and it gives hope. Right. Let's, yeah, it's, it's the, the little things as well. So you help provide, get volunteers to, to help out with that. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I know this because we've talked about it before. Um, is there a particular age that, you, you know, you have to be at least this tall to help or, or help me? What I love about volunteering with Family Promise is that all ages can volunteer. Yeah. And so it's a uh, multi-generation volunteer. I love when I see families coming with small children. I love when I see um, parents coming with teenagers, and I love when I see people like me whose children have, uh, who have children have moved on, who come and who are almost like grandparents. Yeah. Uh, all ages are welcome, and the wonderful thing is that we get to know other people in this church as we serve together. Well, something that Family Promise does that a shelter can't do the beauty of Family Promise is that we keep families together. Yeah. So that if yeah. a mother has teenage sons and had to go to a shelter, her sons would have to be put into a male shelter. Our families stay together and the children stay in their same schools. So there's some normalcy wow. in their life and that's very, very important. That's huge. Yeah. Well, has outreach made a difference in your life? Outreach has made a huge difference in my life. I uh, just have to mention that when doing this program, um, God has taught me several things. And one yeah. is about abundant love. The other is about sharing a table. The other is about loving as Jesus loved. And that when you do that, healing occurs. And so in our last hosting, we were having dinner and I looked at the table. We had our volunteers, we had our families. And at one end of the table, one of our guests was standing up singing praise <laughs> songs. Our volunteers were joining in. Sitting near me was another guest and volunteer who were having a heartfelt discussion about um, a journey through struggle and, and really feeding each other spiritually. And in the midst of it, we had one of our five-year-old guests who has volunteered with his family since he was probably two. And the way we started that dinner was with Frazier singing The Grace. <laughs> and as I sat there, I went, oh God, dear God, this is what the heavenly feast is about. This is heaven. So I saw heaven on earth. <laughs> and the 
uh, host felt the same thing after that dinner. God was in the dod. Jesus was uh, in the dod, and the Holy Spirit was in the dod that night. I'm gonna cloud up. I, that's <laughs> that's incredible. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks, uh, yeah. and sh- and share the table. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that a lot. Our mission is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We do it through worship. We do it through outreach. And the third thing that I want to talk about this morning, and I've asked Nancy Irwin to share with us, is we do it through community. As I said earlier, it's not good to be alone. Not for any of us. We were made to be in community with one another. Jesus said where two or more are gathered, I'm in your midst. That we don't just gather with other people, that Jesus is a part of it. And I've invited Nancy Irwin to share some of the evidence of God in her life. She's been a part of this church for just a little while. (laughs) Hey, Nancy. Thank you, Tom. Sure. How long have you been a part of this church? Oh, my goodness, since the 60s when I was a child and came here with my family. Oh, wow. (laughs) That's right. So you grew up here in Roswell? I grew up here. I met my husband here, and he came here in the 60s, too. (laughs) Wow. Don't meet many locals here. (laughs) Exactly. That's wonderful. Roswell was a little bitty back then. It was very small, but this was a growing church and a great place to be. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm sure it's helped nurture your faith all along. Oh, my goodness, yes. I feel so fortunate to have been a part of Roswell Methodist for all these years. There's so many opportunities, and... Um, the more you dig in, the more you want to dig in. And I've, I've found that God has really used this church and the programs here to shape my faith. Well, and community, you're plugged in a lot of different ways with other people. It's kind of your superpower. Um. <laughs> Thank, thankfully, yes, those people mean so much okay. to us. Talmadge and I are in Discovery Sunday School. We're uh-huh. also in a journey group on Wednesday nights. And those folks have been been with us through happy times, tough times, very sad times. They've supported us, and uh, we they mean so much to us, and we've learned so much about God through them and through our study and through our prayer times and through your... We also love to hear your sermons. Uh, so, you're kind. Yes, indeed. Well, if you've been here since the 60s, you have have had some ups and some downs, yes, and yes. people have been with you. Yes. With you yes. is the key there through exactly. all those times. We've... Um, We've raised our family here. So one of the best things is that our children are all out of the house and all have found churches that they enjoy. And we're so thankful. And I was thinking about what one uh, one of our children, our daughter said, well, who wouldn't like to go to church? It's always so fun. She said that when she was in the youth department. I think she really meant it. And now she's serving in her church in Cherokee County. Um, But Talmadge and I have experienced the loss of beloved family members and, and they're, they've, this church has supported us through all those times and lifted us in prayer and done their funerals. And we're very thankful to have a church home that we yeah. can count on. Well, I'm thankful that you're here too. Thank Is you. there anything else that you'd like to say about that? Well, I just think that it, I would, I encourage people to dig in more. Yeah. The, 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 the intergenerational love that goes on yeah. in this church is so meaningful too. Um, our, you know, we say Sunday school classes are for particular ages, but that's not really true. And the more you yeah. know young people in the youth department, the more you sit near folks older than yourself in worship and in, in small groups, it's so meaningful. And, and it just adds a great dimension to your life, for a sure. A lot to give thanks to Jesus Amen. for. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> thanks for sharing with us. Thank I appreciate you, it a lot. Thank you. Here at Roswell, we help people live a Christ-centered life through worship, through outreach, and through community. And we celebrate that by giving thanks through word, through deed. And in that celebration, you know, we want to open up a door, a door into the church for other folks. And we also want to open up a, a door into the community for other people, but also a door into the future. Let folks know that, that God's not asleep, God's not dead, that here at Roswell, God's still on the move. One of the projects that we have going on right now, it's not the only thing we're doing, but it is one of the things we're doing, is our Commons Project. Our Commons Project is, is a, a redesign of the whole of the campus around a, a centrally focused area. It pulls in all generations, all people, all the ways that we reach out, all the way from the counseling center to the Dodd to the to the 
coffee shop to the, all the way around, that we pull folks in to a place that's inviting the commons. Right now what we're doing is we're, we're trying to, to raise money, raise money so we can make that be a place that, that honors God. We're going to look at demolishing the scout hut, making terraces there that are inviting for the community, inviting for other people. And then phase one will make the, the whole of the commons a place where we can move the pavilion to the other. And phase two will build a, a, a classroom section there that's also for support groups, also for community groups, also f to, to invite other folks in. But this phase one, what we're trying to do is raise $1.25 million, $1,250,000 in order to get started. The projected cost of the phase one is about $2 million, $2.5 million. And what we want to do is we want to get that started and finish it and not be in debt in three years. Well, to get it started, and to, to reach that goal, what we want to do is we want to get cash of $1,250,000 between now and the end of this year. And then to have added on top of that pledge for the next three years. So far, we have about $400,000 toward that $1.25 million goal for this year in cash already. We've got a, another, well, the total that's pledged is 800000 over the next three years. And I want to invite you to take part of that. Be a part of what reaching into the, to the future. There's a, 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 a drop-down screen for you and a way to pledge. And it asks for cash for this year and also pledge over the next three years. I'd like to invite you to be a part of that and consecrate this time in prayer in giving thanks to God. Let's pray together. Jesus, this is a time. It is a day of celebration. It's a day to point to you that in everything, all our words, all our deeds, we do it in, in your name and we give thanks through you to God the Father. Thank you for the opportunity. May we never take our praise or honor of you for granted. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. 
Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.